Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And as you saw on the thumbnail, the more Mylea. Ooh, I should have wiped off that blade. It's got fingerprints all over it. Of course, this is the big brother of the Malaya that came out last year. And, uh, well, this came out just at the end of last year, didn't it? Or the start of this year, I guess. I don't remember the exact date. It's the big brother. It's a bit bigger. It's the Malaya. Case closed. Let's go on to something else. No, no, no. It's worth talking about. One really great way for Canadians that this is different is the price. In the United States, this sells for $59.99 at most places. White Mountain Knives, you save 10%. That's $53.99 US for this knife. Integrityknives.com, uh, my favorite Canadian knife store, doesn't have this. You can get save 10% there with the same coupon code as White Mountain Knives. That's coupon code CCE. Uh, but Blades Canada has it for $54.99 Canadian, making it less money in Canada than it is in the United States. And a lot of places in the U.S. are sold out. Like White Mountain Knives is currently sold out of this. Blades Canada, a.k.a. Warriors and Wonders, has got all four versions of this knife. It comes in two different colors of G10, this black and an OD green. And you can have a stone wash or a black coated blade. You mix that up whatever ways and you got four different versions. I am sure they're going to come up with more, some exclusives, exclusives that different stores have and things. My guess is the price at Warriors and Wonders is wrong. And they're going to catch on as soon as people start buying them out. So if you're Canadian and watching this, I guess if you're in the States, you can watch this and buy it from them too. You know, they'll ship it to you, no problem. Just like American stores ship to Canada, Canadian stores ship to the United States, no problem. Now let's stop talking about all the prices and stuff. Let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look. First, let's do the size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. Put that guy on the screen. This is definitely a smaller knife. And here comes the original Malaya. This is actually a limited edition, uh, only available at integrityknives.com, integrityknives.com in Canada. S35VN steel here, micarta. It's definitely a smaller knife. And the lighting, I don't know, I think my lighting is burning out. It's LEDs and they only get so bright and I think my system's starting to die. I might have to buy some more lighting. It's definitely a smaller knife. It's wider, bigger, fatter in hand, but it's not a very big knife. The original Malaya was, is a little bit small. It fits okay in the hand this way. And I've talked about it a few times. I really think it could benefit from a full forward choil. So your index finger goes up here instead. Then even the grip on this tiny guy is very nice, much more comfortable, much more sturdy and safe. Uh, I put some, uh, why can't I think of the word of masking tape? Masking tape. I put a bunch of masking tape over the blade so I wouldn't hurt myself and left most of it exposed. And I found that this grip is just awesome. And this new guy, the same way, even bigger hands. My hands are just into the extra large range. And yeah, that would be a much better grip with the index finger in there. They've got an oversized choil here anyway, and that's because the plunge is really gradual. It takes a long time to go from the thickness of the ricasso to the thinness of the bevel. It's not a quick transition. We've got the exact same styling cues, same pocket clip, just bigger. Nice deep carry. Uh, on this limited edition, there's no uh, left pocket clip, but I'm left-handed and I don't mind. <laughs> Just two little holes there, nothing big to stand out. We've got button screws in the G10, which I don't like. We've got the backspacer here. We've got the lanyard pin up here still, just like we had on the original. In my opinion, that's a bad spot for a lanyard pin because you're holding it in your hand and now your lanyard has to put more pressure right there because when you're gripping it, 
has to come out of that hole, right? Same thing on here. When you're holding the knife, you know, it's going to push harder on there. If you got a nice soft lanyard, it's paracord, it's not a big deal. It's just, I think they could have done it better and put it further to the back so that the lanyard can come out the back. Other than that, yeah, I don't mind. I don't use lanyards much. We've got the same coil, I mean, uh, pivot collar. Some of the other things about this knife, we've got an anodized thumb stud. Thumb studs are fairly typical style. And that's all the color on this one, at least. Thumb studs work really well. They're easy to get behind and deploy the blade, either right or left-handed. Oops, that one wasn't very hard. <laughs> there you go. And easy to use. I like the thumb studs a lot. The flipper, not so much. I'm not that fond of it. This knife is wider this way than most knives with front flippers are. So it's a little bit more awkward. You have to reach your thumb further over. And once you've deployed the knife, you've got to turn the knife in your hand a fair distance to use it. Whereas with the thumb studs, you deploy and use. And so I think it works a whole lot better with the thumb studs. I don't use the flipper tab very much, but the flipper tab's comfortable enough. Thumb studs have really good access. I should have said that from the right or left side. Really nice jimping back here, not too you know sharp and not too rounded. It offers good grip. I like that. The badging on this knife, it's not too in your face, but they had a problem when they did their badging. These are laser etched uh, markings on here. It says China right there. That's really nice. The uh, it's not really a serial number, but yeah, they call it serial number. It's the model number, and then the steel AR RPM 9, good steel, good budget steel. It's usually around 5960 on the Rockwell hardness. It's got good edge retention, good corrosion resistance, good durability, good toughness. It's a good budget steel. And then up there it says Swags. She's a great designer. Uh, I got to meet her in uh, two years ago, 2019, at uh, Blade Show in Atlanta. And I got to see some of her custom stuff. Uh, nice stuff. It looks like they ran out and it's it's lost the uh, blackness on the on the G's and the S on this side. And on CGRB, it starts off gray and then becomes fully black. So it didn't print properly. I know it's not printing in the traditional sense, but it's laser printing. It didn't work that great. The blade shape, yeah, it's a pretty good blade shape. Flat grind, nice flats here. I uh, already talked about the sharpness choil. We've got this nice K tip to it. Yeah, some people call it reverse tanto. Yeah, the modern tag for that is K tip. It comes from uh, Japanese, the Kiritsuki and the uh, Kangata style of blade, where you have a really sharp clip point and then you've got the belly. Either you've got a belly or fairly straight, you know, like a sax. It's they. People need to stop calling it reverse tanto and start calling it K-tip because a tanto has got a sharp edge and then a transition and then another sharp edge. This has only got one sharp edge. That's not sharp. That's blunt. K-tip. This blade, it's thin behind the grind. The sharpening of it's done pretty poorly. I'll talk about that later on. The handle's nicely filled out. Nice rounding on the G10. Flat slab G10. Decent texture. Good hand feel. Alignment, really nice. Lockup, really nice. Lock release, loads of access to the lock release. And the last con before we go to the next step is, look at that. Looking at this side, the, show, the pocket clip side here, you can see the lock release steel right there. You shouldn't be able to see that. On most knives, you can't. <laughs> and the reason that's annoying is when you're holding the knife, if you're doing some hard cutting and you're squeezing with your hand really tight, your fingers are rubbing against that narrow edge. Because remember, there's a swedge there, right? And so the steel's narrow and the steel sticking proud of the handle scale. Like the G10 should be matching that line altogether. They could have easily taken it, either the metal down to match the G10 here, 
and have a flat top with just a little bit of a swedge on the side, there'd still be lots of room to get at it right there. But they chose to make it stick out too far. I think that's just a, a faux pas. It's a miss. And it's not nice. If I was keeping this knife, and I think I probably will because I want to do some modifications to it, one of the modifications is I'm taking this steel down a bit so that it's not so hot when you grab it tight. The other thing is I'm going to cut a proper forward choil in there. That's enough for this first part of the video. Let's keep going to more details. Now they do have some Loctite in their body screws, but they weren't difficult to remove, so that's okay. A little bit of Loctite in the uh, pivot pin screw as well. There's the anodized collar ring. We've got ceramic ball bearings in there, as hopefully you can see. Well, you can see them in the close up. Ceramic detent ball. A little bit of skeletonizing here, but that's not really skeletonizing. That's instead of milling out the steel from the side to create the lock spring tension, they just give it less steel, and that's what gives it the spring tension that turns it into a spring right there. The skeletonizing is over here. Just two holes in there. Which is very good because the balance point is almost exactly where I like it to be. So very simple construction. I've got it back together again with new oil and oh, it's even smoother now than it was before. I really do like the oil that I chose for my knife. Uh, this stuff, Lucas Real Oil, Fishing Real Oil that I buy, it's like $5 American, $4 American, $8 or $9 Canadian at Amazon. One other thing, just before we do the measurements, I didn't talk about this before I wanted to, the black versions. If you've got the black screws, it's black anodization. Now, this is a premium version, so I have not carried it an awful lot. And already the anodization on that screw is rubbing off. It's because it sits proud. It's a button that's bumped up. And so it rubs on there if you ever have anything that it can rub on. On the pocket clip, it's come off there as well. It just wears very easily, the, the black stuff. So I really recommend get the stone wash finish and it's not going to show wear and tear anywhere near as quickly as it would otherwise. All right, measurements, all that kind of stuff. AR RPM 9, it's a good budget steel that uh, Artisan Cutlery designed and came out with. And of course, CJRB is an Artisan Cutlery company for those of you who are new to knives. And this is a good steel. It's a good stainless steel. It's got a Rockwell hardness around 59 Good edge retention, good durability, good toughness at a good price. It's certainly not a premium steel, but it's a good steel. The weight of this knife, 104 grams, 3.65 ounces. And that balance point, like I forgot to show you before, it's right there. So, yeah, you don't want it too much lighter in the handle or else the balance point's going to move too far. I like it between where it was and close to the pivot pin, but don't go past the pivot pin on your balance point, that would not be good. Factory sharpness. They did a pretty good job in terms of getting a sharp edge on here, 110 bests. It's a little bit better than average, so that's a good thing. But you're gonna find out in a minute, it came at a cost. The cutting edge length, 71.4 millimeters, 2.81 inches. The blade length, tip so the closest spot on the G10 is 75.6 millimeters, 2.98 inches. Yes, it's under three inches. So kudos on that. They had a small knife and then they made the big one still available to anybody who lives in a jurisdiction where they have three inch laws. So that's good on them. The blade thickness, 2.59 millimeters, 0 0.102 of an inch. So just a bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the widest point is right by my thumbnails, 30.4 millimeters, 1.2 inches. How thin is it behind the grind? 0.42 millimeters, 16 thousandths of an inch. Kudos. 
That's very good. That means you can sharpen the knife a lot of times before it gets thick behind the grind. The grind angles. On this side, it's an average of 16 and a half. Hey, that sounds great, doesn't it? On this side, it's an average of 18.2. But let me tell you the truth. It starts on this side at 18.2. It goes to 14.7 degrees here, and it near the tip, it's 16 and a half degrees. So that averages up to 16 and a half. This side starts at 20.4 degrees, goes to 17.7 degrees in the middle, and ends around 16 and a half degrees. So the only thing consistent about this is whoever sharpened this got to 16 and a half degrees on both sides of the tip. But they didn't get it centered down the blade. As you can see on this side, there's just a little bit of steel that's removed from the sharpening. And on this side, it's wider. So they've brought the tip of the blade over to this side instead of down the middle. The sharpening, actually, it's par for the course for CJRB. They just do not do good sharpening. But the best thing is, since it is only 16 thousandths of an inch thick here, uh, 16 and a half thousandths, sorry, 16.5 thousandths, uh, you can sharpen this all the way along. Since the sharpener's trail is nice, you can reach do the edge to whatever angle you want and you'll still have a nice thin blade. So that's a good redemption right there. The handle length, 100.3 millimeters, 3.95 inches. The grip area, it's about uh, seven and a half centimeters, about three inches. Hopefully a forward choil, then you can make it much bigger. The thickness of the handle, just on the G10 slabs, 9.7 millimeters, which is 0.382 of an inch. So yes, it's still a very thin knife. The inset liners help with that. Thin G10, that also helps keep it light too. The handle depth, the widest point's right here. That is 31.9 millimeters, 1.26 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest point is, I think it's right here, it might be here. It's very similar along here. 31.9, no, 37.9 millimeters, 1.49 inches. And the total length from tip to tail, 177 millimeters, 6.97 inches. That's all the measurements. I told you the prices before. I just did the Patreon giveaway draw today. I talked about it in my previous video. I uh, did a previous video. Anyway, my newest supporter, AJB from YouTube Memberships, is the winner and he gets to pick any one of the knives I reviewed last month as his prize. He just has to help pay for shipping. If you want to support the channel down below here, there's a link called join. You can help support the channel that way or you can go to patreon.com cce and support the channel. I randomly draw one of you guys to win a knife every single month. And I give my Patreon supporters, my YouTube member supporters, first access, 48 hours access to all my sales. My next sale will be probably in early April. So you can prepare for that. What are my thoughts about this knife? There's lots really good about this knife. I like the thumb stud, the placement, the availability of getting at them. Very nice. Pocket clip's pretty good. It could be smaller this way. It doesn't need to stand out as far as it does. That's okay. Uh, access to the lock release, great. I just wish there wasn't access on the opposite side for some odd reason. Nice, thin behind the grind. Uh, the badging's not terribly big, and it's in the right places. I wish it was a little smaller yet and cleaner. That would be nice. Yeah, the cons, it's an odd grip. It really is. A lot of people love it, but it really is an odd grip with this section up here. If they were going to leave this without a forward choil, I wish they would have drawn it back and brought the cutting edge closer to your hand so that you can cut right where my fingernail is. Now you've got to go up here. Or they should have made this into a forward choil. These large sharpness choils that are not large enough for a finger it confounds me. Why do the people do that? Why did companies and designers do that? It doesn't make sense to me. 
unless they've got tiny fingers and they reach over like this. But reaching over like this with just the tip of my finger, that's kind of awkward when you're actually cutting. You know, it looks like it's not awkward on video, but when you're actually pushing on it and cutting, that's weird. You want a grip like this. And that's just uncomfortable where it is. You need it to sink in there. Jimping up here, I really like that. I forgot to mention that. Recessed button screws and they're T6 and they're not very high quality and they use Loctite. It's asking for trouble with these screws. I've mentioned drive grip in many videos. It's really good stuff. It's a lifesaver. Uh, this front flipper, it's just awkward to use. You have to really reach over to use it. Does it work? Yeah, it works. I'm just calling it awkward. Much less awkward to do that and then cut, in my opinion. Just open it, use it. But with the front trial, you got to reach over, open it, and then oh, a little less than that, but yeah, not great. So there you go. That and bad sharpening. Is this a knife that I recommend? Hey, there's nothing inherently super bad about it. There's nothing here that you can't fix on your own, especially the sharpening of this. So there you go. The more Malaya versus the original Malaya. They're both pretty good. I wish they were both a little bit better. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.